Okay, so our last um, really short uh, discussion before we go to lunch is we have a very special guest with us here, Alexander Geze. Yes, I can see you. Um, can you hear us okay? You can hear me? Ah, wonderful. Okay. So um, Alexandra is joining us, uh, couldn't be here in person, but was very gracious to say that she would join online to address the group that is here today in person and online. Alexandra, uh, or Frau Geze, is a member of the European Parliament for the Greens uh, in the parliamentary group of Bonn. Frau Giese negotiated the extensive Digital Services Act, which regulates digital platforms and social networks. Of equal importance, she was the coordinator of the European Parliament's Special Committee on Artificial Intelligence in the Digital Age. And I know Frau Geza has been working extensively and tirelessly to make sure that the topic of environmental justice, or at least environmental consequences of making and using AI, is something that policymakers or parliamentarians are, are paying attention to. That's on a professional side. On a personal note, I would also like to um, extend a most gracious thank you for joining us today. Um, Frau Geze was also uh, in person at the opening of the lab launch. And so really, it's, it's so wonderful to see the continued support from both the city, the university, as well as someone in your standing. It's, it's such an honor to have you here today. And thank you so much for taking a few minutes from your very busy schedule to address the group that's here. So I give the floor to you, Frau Geze. Thank you very much, uh, Aimé. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, a very warm welcome. I'm from the European Parliament. I'm in Brussels. I would have loved to be with you in Bonn, which is also my hometown where I spent the weekend. But um, uh, I have a busy schedule here, so I have to do this, this online, unfortunately. I would like to especially thank Professor Hoch and Professor Van Weinsberger for inviting me. Uh, I'm very honored to speak to such a distinguished audience today, and I already want to thank you for your work today and to express how important your work is uh, to me as a policymaker and to all my colleagues here in the European Parliament struggling with uh, with AI legislation. I would like to share some news this morning. I don't know if you have already read this. It has not been very much covered by the press, but you know that we are working on the AI Act, so the major European legislation for artificial intelligence. And we are working on the opinion of the parliament in particular. And we were quite lucky um, to have ChatGTP uh, coming out just a few weeks ago and reminding everybody how uh, what what a, what a crucial technology artificial intelligence will be and how a huge the impact on every sector of our life will be. This has really helped to come to a more progressive opinion in the European Parliament. We have had a vote in May at committee level for the report of the European Parliament, which would strongly influence then the final legislation. So it was voted in, in the two committees, the two lead committees. And we have had some major breakthroughs, which we have been fighting for at the past year, but which we absolutely were not sure to have majorities. And one of the huge breakthrough is that the majority shifted um, on the question on whether to include foundation models or not. And this was really the huge struggle of um, the leading AI companies who really did not want their foundation models being subject to the European AI Act. I was in Silicon Valley in May last year and what Google told us this is that their main concern and um, the main issue they wanted to focus also the lobbying on was to have foundation models excluded from the AI Act. And so far, this has not succeeded because in the first opinion at committee level, this still has to go to plenary, foundation models are included. They are not considered high risk as other AI applications, but there are specific obligations to address risks and harms, um, to uh, address data governance, to avoid bias, and there's a mandatory registration for such models. This is far from perfect, but we know that it's very difficult, difficult to make perfect legislation for such a dynamic set of technologies 
but it is still far more than we have hoped for so far. The second major breakthrough is um, that we now have environmental standards mentioned. Um, don't need to tell you that uh, especially large models need huge data volumes, therefore, therefore very high energy and resources consumption. This was an aspect that um, Commission Council and so far the parliamentary majority really wanted to not to address. Um, there was all this, this narrative, if we put any standards, any benchmarks, any limits on this, we will hamper innovation. I think this is, this is absolutely not true and we did achieve a breakthrough. So no, we have some wording on environmental standards, on benchmarking in here. This is, as it will be difficult to find a methodology, but at least the attention is there that the European legislator is interested in this aspect, and I think only this is already sending a message. Um, a third point I would like to mention is that we have a, a series of bans. Um, for example, there's now a complete ban in, on biometric identification in public spaces. Um, emotion recognition will not be banned as technology, but the application, for example, in the justice system and education workplace, border management will be banned according to the parliament's opinion, which is not the final legislation, as I said. Predictive policing, biometric categorization according to gender, health, or se sexual orientation. We also have a ban on private systems for biometric identification, something like Clearview, for example, will not be possible in Europe. And social scoring, which was already um, banned in the Commission proposal for public actors, will also be prohibited for private actors. Um, so I think this is, this is these are really major breakthroughs in, in terms of making AI sustainable. Um, we will need to see what happens in the further process that has to go through plenary in the European Parliament. And then we have negotiations with the Council where the member states' governments are represented, so the so-called trilogue procedure. But I think this is a very good start from the Parliament uh, from the Parliament's report, and I hope you will strongly help us to to support this throughout the negotiations to come up with some very progressive legislation in Europe. Um, your work is, as I said at the beginning, extremely important, um, especially in AI, where it is not easy to find uh, independent experts. There's a very strong lobbying. It's a handful of companies, basically, who are really dominating the artificial intelligence scene in terms of, of production of those systems, but also in terms of lobbying here in Brussels. And they try to spread narratives. And this is, I think, where we need your help as well. And one narrative is that um, innovation um, is hampered by regulation and innovation is hampered by environmental standards. And I know the scientific community already already tells me, well, I mean, this is this is so old school. We don't think that innovation is innovation when it supports, when it helps society and when it helps to um, society to abide by the climate goals to protect the planet and the people. But here in Brussels, it's still a very industry led narrative that says, well, innovation is when you let companies do whatever they want. And that's not my idea of innovation. I think innovation needs to serve the people and it needs to serve the planet. And that is the kind of innovation we want. And that is the kind of innovation we want to, to support. And I think there we really need your help as independent researchers. Um, yeah, I think this is this is the, the big message. Um, I don't think that Europe is lagging behind on artificial intelligence because we have too much regulation, but rather because we do not have enough investment. We do not have enough capital in the US. There's four times more private capital than in Europe. This obviously attracts talent and gives companies a lot more possibilities, but we have so many extremely talented people in Europe. So I think we together we need to find a way how to... Um, to make artificial intelligence in Europe progress to have really the good innovation here so talent so people really want to work stay here in Europe and how to channel private but also public uh, public capital to those researchers who really create uh, more value for our society for our planet and I think you are really the people who are helping there. So thank you very much for your work. I would have loved to spend the day with you. I don't have that, that privilege, but I, I really trust in you. Thank you so much. 
Thank you so much. I'm not sure if you can hear the clapping. I'm not sure if you can hear the clapping, but everyone here is clapping. Uh, unfortunately, you. I can't, but okay. I'm, I'm happy that you're telling me. Okay, so it's a room full of people clapping. <laughs> um, thank you so much for taking the time to join us again this morning and, it, and also to give us an update on uh, the situation or the report, the opinion of the, of the European Parliament. That's fantastic to hear. We'll also have former director of the Council of Europe joining us in a, in a few days to discuss this idea of environmental assessment. So it's, it's really promising because I know you and I spoke about this a year and a half, two years ago and we were both just in shock that this wasn't on the minds of parliamentarians or policymakers. So it's really exciting to hear that so much progress has been made in, in a relatively short amount of time. So thank you for your efforts in making that happen. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and uh, we will keep you updated definitely on how um, the talks and how the rest of the conference goes. Take good care. Okay, tschüss. You too. Bye. Bye. Yeah, seriously, that's really good. I remember us speaking about two years ago and, and just remarking at how the lobbying was so powerful that no environmental impact assessment would happen. So I think it's really, really um, exciting and, and gives me optimism to see that maybe, maybe there is a chance that things could change for the better, that we have this chance of repairing. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to stop talking now because I'm holding you back from lunch. Lunch is going to be served in the foyer, but please enjoy the surroundings. There's tables outside. The Rhine is just there or there. It's around, yeah. But enjoy. We start again at 1 o'clock and check your programs for the, the different sessions. Rooms are upstairs and in here. Okay, have a great lunch. Guten Appetit.